I'm Jasmine. And I'm Brandon. And we have some TV and movie news for you. That we do. So in some television news, Charlie Sheen is back in the press, and this time he's not doing something crazy. What? Yeah, it's a complete surprise. No but then way. also, his old show Two and a Half Men is in the press, and not for him doing something crazy. What? How is that possible? Both of them have broken records for their single shows, because Charlie Sheen was on the roast, and then Two and a Half Men, the new season started up with Ashton Kutcher taking his place. And so did you, you watched the roast, right? I watched a little bit of the roast, and there were some crazy intense jokes. I mean, it's a roast. People yeah. kind of let go. It was a little a, a low blow, apparently, to Ryan Dunn, but we're not going to get into that. Um, too much drama. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. It was, it was a roast. I just kind of wasn't into it. I'm over this yeah. Charlie Sheen thing. I don't think it's that funny and crazy. He's, he's, he's a crazy guy. We yeah. should expect this from him. Most of the jokes about Charlie Sheen have already been made. Exactly. And so it's like, so what, are they, what else awesome. are they going to say on the roast? This is like three months too late. Yeah. Um, but with the two and a half men thing, it's because of him that everyone watched the show. Yeah. So I don't know, have you seen any of the other new uh, shows coming out? Uh, no, all I saw was like the first half of two and a half men and I was like, yep, not gonna waste my time anymore. Cause I mean, it seems like it's gonna do better with Ashton Kutcher. He seems like he's got a better humor style than Charlie Chan. I mean, that's pretty, that's, Chelsea, that's not Chelsea hard. So sweet in that yeah. Show. And I mean, the, the role he's taking is like somebody who could easily get with women, but he's too depressed to. And so okay. it's an interesting role, but it's still two and a half men with their annoying laugh track. And so I'm just yeah, like, right. I'm out. But um, have you watched I, any of the ones? I was able to catch uh, some, and I'm still, the, we're, at the time of filming, we're about in the middle of the week. Um, so we're still kind of getting some new shows. But um, I saw the Playboy Club, oh, okay. and I have to say, disappointed. Ugh. Very. I, I'm a man. I, I love Playboy. It's like <laughs> the coolest thing, especially in the 60s. It was just, not for the fact that it's nude girls and stuff like that. It's classy. And it was like the epitome of class and coolness. And, and it was and revolutionary for that, time. For that time period. So I thought I had really high hopes for the show thinking, yeah, that's awesome. That's, like a, that's yeah. like a different take on that whole retro thing that Mad Men started. But it was crap. It was yeah. really bad. It seemed in the oh. beginning that they were going to go for one thing and then they completely changed it afterwards. It's just like the commercials in the beginning made it seem like it was very much like about kind of the history of Playboy and then and it turned then it as if it was turning into, into like, some drama show. Yeah, it's like drama like, ooh, who killed this guy? Who killed this guy? And I don't know if it's set in like actual like historical fiction. I know Hugh Hefner like does the voiceover for it. Oh, okay. It's kind of like a, a How I Met Your Mother where he's like explaining the story. Not, yeah. there's no flashbacks or anything, but it all takes place in that time. But he does like the voiceover saying like, Oh, yeah, this guy ran this part, and this dude did this, and oh, these women were great, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of boring. It's uh, just that boring. Sucks. I'm, I'm excited, though, the new girl. I got to say I'm excited for that, and Once Upon a Time, I really want to check out just because I'm a Fables fan. Oh, nice. It does seem like a Fables ripoff, but let us know if you guys have seen anything. Let us uh, know what you like and what you disliked. Yeah, in the comments below. So this is something that I'm actually very excited to see happen, and that is Fox developing a show for the Spectre. Outside of the fact that Fox is developing it, I am very excited to see this show kind of happen. I think the Spectre has the kind of show or kind of sort of MO that would make a good like 30 minute block every week and you can have a different story every week. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it would definitely work as a uh, cop drama. Mm -hmm. I mean, for sure. I don't think it'll actually reach our TV screens. Uh, Fox has been very hesitant on a lot of things lately, uh, especially superhero stuff. Yeah. Or uh, I shouldn't say superhero stuff, I should say comic, comic book, book stuff. stuff. Uh, and, uh, it, I mean, this isn't the 90s anymore. They don't take chances. Anymore. They really should, though. I think the Spectre and I think Lock and Key would have made a great TV show, but especially the Spectre. I think I read a, a one-shot not too long ago, or actually it was a, um, the DC short that came before one of its animated movies oh, yeah. that, for the Spectre, and it was it like was awesome. the 1970s. It was pretty much like Paul Newman like in a cop drama, and it was great, and they should make that into a show. That would be perfect. Spectre would be a, a fantastic live action show. I'm just afraid that Fox is just going to get our hopes up again. We're going to see uh, a trailer uh, that we're going to get casted and stuff like that. And then they're going to... Step on our dreams? Yeah, exactly. Step on our uh, dreams. Because with Lock and Key, uh, I'm, as you guys all know, I'm a huge fan. Me and too. Uh, it would work perfectly on television. And as with the Spectre, I think it would work perfectly on television. But... And the Lock and Key trailer was beautiful. Oh, yeah. And that didn't even have any special effects, you know. And, and that, that book is based off of what, you know, abilities they get. And Spectre has to have a good special effects budget. True. You know, because for the Spectre side of the show, I mean, they, it and, and it has to be consistent, too. I mean, I don't want to see the Spectre once and then them expect us to not have to see him, see him for the whole season, you yeah, know. I agree. So for a long time now, they've been talking about another Blair Witch movie. And I was hoping they would forget. 
Well, they haven't. It looks like the original co-director of the film is talking and saying that there will be a sequel. It's just up to Lionsgate at this point. And it would essentially cover up the whole actual sequel that came out, The, the Book awful of Shadows. One, the awful, awful thing that happened? Yeah. So, um, you know, I was never a fan of the Blair Witch Project, I have to be honest. It was right before, like, I was just too young in the 90s to care, honestly, and it got to the point where going back and watching it is a horrible decision. See, I, I, I was too young, like, movies scared the crap out of me. Me too. When I was little, so, so that was like, oh, scary movie, I don't need to watch it. Exactly. And then, yeah, I finally did. I'm not, I don't know, I know a lot of people did like it. I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I'm not saying it was a bad movie or anything. My, my favorite part of this is that the co-director said that it's all about getting the cast and all their schedules in yeah. order. So everyone pretty much has to stop bartending on graveyard shifts at TGI oh, Fridays oh. so they can come back and make this movie. That's harsh. It's the truth. <laughs> well, I, I, that is cool that they're getting everybody back. You know, all the original. They just said the original cast members wouldn't be main characters, but they would be in it. And you are giving it back to the people who Created made the it. first one. Yeah. So you got to figure they have something in mind, something better than the second one. So, I don't know, I guess we'll see what happens. So one of my favorite movies of the past year, Source Code. Duncan Jones! For real. Right? Uh, looks like Source Code is getting a TV adaptation. Hmm. I'm going to come right out and say it. <laughs> Not Double. interested. I mean, okay, I'm kind of interested. It was a very interesting concept. Jake Gyllenhaal attached to it? This will be awesome. Jake Gyllenhaal not attached to it? Hmm. I think the movie was cool, but I think you're taking a cool idea and, killing and it. now you're trying to just squeeze as much as you can. Well, it, out it is of a it. very interesting concept, and it's kind of like a technology that they would have developed not for this one particular thing. Like, yeah. oh, there's one train crash. It's like, do this time travel thing well, technically. It's, I mean the way they set it up in the movie that it's like this was the test run of that. So then from so they were going to do it just build off of that. It makes sense that they can build off of it because you can solve very cool mysteries and you only get 8 minutes. Well, well the thing uh, if you haven't seen the movie there's a spoiler coming up so just fast forward a little bit. He's essentially dead in the movie. They're running off of his still active brain waves because the body had just died. So you'd have a main character who's going into this thing, but it, it, he's a dead guy that he can't exist outside of this room in his brain where people are talking to him. Okay. So I don't, I don't know. It's kind of limited. That, that makes it yeah. very, very limited. But And they did say it was going to be like, what was it? S NCIS. NCIS with the humor of Groundhog Day. No, they said it was going to be a, a pretty much just a mixture of NCIS, Groundhog Day, and Quantum Leap, but I think it'll work perfectly if they just didn't use anything from NCIS, the humor of Groundhog Day, and the weirdness and quirkiness of Quantum Leap. I think that'd be cool, but... I mean, I if, it, if this makes it past the still, pilot and everything, yeah. I'll give it a shot, but let us know what you guys think. So, after months of speculation and dodging reporters, J.J. Abrams has finally committed to doing Star Trek II. This pump. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. This is actually really, really awesome news. I... Loved we talked about this a lot. So I'm a hardcore Star Wars fan from birth. I hated Star Trek. This movie, the first movie, made, the first J.J. Abrams movie, I'm sorry, I need to be clear with Very this. specific. Uh, the first J.J. Abrams movie changed my opinion completely. It was awesome. I love the way they in included it and like tied it into the original series, how they kind of like made it all cohesive and it was, it was clean, it was good, and they had a great cast. Uh, they casted Kirk perfectly. The first scene. I can't watch I it. I cried. have to fast forward through it. I can't I watch cried. it. I And they threw in R2-D2 and C-3PO in there. That's a cool Easter egg. It's just a good movie overall. So the fact that we're getting a sequel on this, thank you. I, I like that it's taken a while and J.J. Abrams has like taken a little, little time. I guess he wanted to make sure the studio was going to give it its full attention. Like he wanted to, it to be the spectacle it needs to be and not just kind of like half-assed and rushed so I'm appreciative of that. Very I much am so. too. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our TV and movie news this week. But until next week, be sure to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube page. I'm Brandon. And I'm Jasmine. And we'll see you next week for even more TV and movie news.